Hey everyone, welcome back to the Discovery Freelancer 4.87 Let's Play slash tutorial slash guide thing. My name is Spazzy Dragon, aka Syndromes, and this is day two. Actually, this is the continuation from our previous video. And uh, as you can see, I've been been busy a little bit, and we have 19 million credits, which is quite a lot. Um, that is more than enough to actually set up a decent fighter, but we aren't quite done yet because we are using the same old gold civilian transport. So, what we did in the last episode, if you haven't checked it, please go and see. We've started off with a new character, I showed you a few things about mining, about um, trading, about how to quickly acquire some money from uh, NPC hunting. And today we are going to expand on it, because, as you might have noticed by now, there's a bit of a thing about these uh, NPC piracies. First of all, it's quite easy to get caught by players when there's quite a few of them online, and, by the way, if the player count actually reaches 100 players, the NPC spawns are actually turned off, or well, significantly reduced, so this sort of uh, money-making will, uh, will work only up to a certain point. So if it is not possible for you to do this sort of thing in the early morning, for example, for me, that's early morning, where there's only 30 to 40 to 20 people online, you will need to have alternative. But the thing is, you should never have only one source of income, because, as I already said in the previous episode, everything you can do on Discovery is pretty much based on how much car uh, how much money you have. This is, again, not uh, EVE Online, where you need to train your character. Everything is available to you if you have the money. So, again, profit is pretty much what you will need if you want to play some kind of um, character, if you want to roleplay properly. If you want to get a cruiser, if you want to get a battleship or a big transport, you will need the funds. So at this point we have 90 million credits, almost 20 actually. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to try and explain in a bit more detail of what is mining. So this is 4.85, uh, sorry, 4.87, and mining is currently the best income in the game. And this is maybe a subject to change at some point, but currently, if you want to make money, mining is the thing. Today, I'm going to try and show you how to properly prepare your ship. Because the thing is, we already touched upon the subject a little in the previous episode, with mining helium as well as scrap metal behind Manhattan, but what I showed you was the very basic mining, because those two things, helium and scrap metal, are one of the very few commodities that you can mine without having a special ship, special turrets, and special ID and IFF combination. Now, a small reminder, the IFF, the identification friend or foe, is shown in your reputation sheet. If the bottom one is not blinking and is not full green, it means that you are flying without an IFF. So mining in by itself is pretty easy. The concept itself is pretty easy. You simply shoot the little rocks and the ore is actually added to your cargo. But the thing is, what we saw in the previous episode was very, very basic. And today we're going to actually create a new character for this, because we are going to keep this little transport as our bank. Obviously we are going to get a bigger ship, but this one we are simply going to use as a bank. So what we're going to do now is set a move cache code. This is going to be very useful for you if you will at some point have multiple accounts with multiple ships on them and you won't uh, want to constantly switch between them to transfer money. So what we're going to do, our character name is Ron Dennis. Obviously after this video I'm going to rename this character. Set cache code 123. So obviously you can have a, a bit more elaborate uh, cash codes. So Ron Dennis, that is our actual name. 
And right now we're going to create a new character, which is going to be called Juan Yuan Timor. Because why not? And once more, we are going to use the restart command because setting up a character is slightly boring. Show restarts. We are looking for the Independent Miners Guild restart, and we can find it. FCMG, FCMG. You will be kicked. Updating character. Please wait eight. No, it's 10 seconds. I'm dyslexic. I blame the beer. I'm actually drinking beer while doing this, so sorry if I stutter because I'm not really that easy to... Yep, I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, this is our new character. It is docked in the Taos, as you can see. Tau 23 is where we are going to mine, because there we can find Niobium. But in order to do so, we will actually need to set up a mining ship. I don't know if it's actually sold here. No, it is not. So, excuse me, I will quickly check the Wikipedia page and find where it's sold. Alright then, so apparently the mining ship is sold in Jakarta, which is this station right here. And we are going to fly straight forward as soon as we undock. So as you can see, if I wanted to make a new ship without the restart command, I would actually have to fly all the way to Chow 23, or this is Chow 39, sorry. All the way from New York, all the way here, and up here. And not to mention, the restart command in this case gives us a... Perfect reputation with the independent miners guild. Ow. Ow. Yeah, don't talk and drive. Okay, so it gives us the perfect reputation as well as the ID, so we don't have to waste my, our time with missions or bribes. And as we are nearing Jakarta, we are actually going to draw some money, because as you can see, we don't exactly have the money to buy it. So, draw cash. Ron Dennis. Or denim, or... Hmm. There we go, and we draw the cash without having to log on that ship, without asking anyone how to do a transfer or anything else. Needless to say, that is pretty damn nice. I remember in 84, we actually didn't have this command. You actually had to trust another people to take your money, and then you would have to log your other character and fly over to them and tell them to give your money back. Needless to say, there was a lot of drama when people would, you know, sort of, you know, not give the money back. So, this is the ship we are going to get. This is called the Asteroid Miner, and apparently we don't have enough money. That is bad. What else do we have? Okay, so apparently this one is even better. Medium transport and a mining ship. Although it only has 800 cargo space, which is not enough. Uh, mining is best done in groups. When you mine, someone else has to stand next to you. You select them and keep mining, and the ore actually appears in their cargo. And while they are busy unloading, you can mine for yourself, eject the cargo, mine it up, eject the cargo, rinse and repeat. Um, the asteroid miner is a large ship. As you can see, it actually has almost 3,000 cargo space, so it's already better than the one we had. But the thing is, it is a just a little bit more dangerous if you mine for yourself and haul for yourself. Mainly because you can be attacked by pirates when you are mining, and at the same time you can encounter them while you are transporting ore. So, yeah. What do we do? Okay, I think I know what we can do. We're going to switch back to Ron Dennis and sacrifice this dinky little ship for some extra cash, because we are not really lacking that much. See, you can see that you have transferred 19 million credits to Yuan Timor. So, what we're going to do now... This ship costs around 7 million credits, so if we 
sell it off at a base, we will pretty much get back about half of the actual ship cost. So let's see what is the cheapest ship here. It's the Griffin. But at the same time, for some reason, I, I can actually sell the ship for only 2 million credits, which is not a lot. Alright. Hmm. I need to think on this. Alright, so the cheapest ship we can actually buy is, in fact, the CSV, which is b sold back on Rochester. So let's just quickly fly there. Hello there, H Fuel! How are you today? Although that is, in fact, a Universal, and that's a LNS sitting there, and that is a capital ship patrol. Oh, shall we risk it? Really seems that that LNS is actually AFK. Let's see what happens. If he gets mad at us, we could always just fly away. Okay, I just pissed off the base. Ow, ow. Everything hurts. And now we can get the fuck out of here. So you can see how this sort of thing is a bit dangerous. So let's see if we can actually sell this off on Rochester, because if we can, then at least I won't have to fly anywhere. New York. New York, Rochester. Yes, it sells pretty well in Rochester. That is where I'm going to sell off the H fuel I just liberated. I'm actually very, very, very lucky that that LNS did not shoot my face in because of this. Although you can see that, as I said, doing this in front of stations hurts a lot. But at least this is not EVE Online when the Concord would just come here and just... What was the term again? Concordukin or whatever. Oh well. Okay, let's see now. I just docked on Rochester, and let's see... Okay, and now we have 2.8. Remember that, 2.8. Come on, come on, log in, log in. Draw cash, Ron Dennis, 1, 2, 3, and it was 2.8. There we go. So let's see if we actually have enough money to buy it now, because apparently... Nope! Still not it. Looks like I will actually have to sell off the damn thing. Alright. This is annoying. I was lucky enough to get a um, actual... There's the CSV. I'm going to sell off everything I have on the ship, just to get the money for it. I'm sad to see this go, but we will make a better ship for this. If we are going to leave this for hunting, you know. Okay, so we have 2.5 again. I just accidentally took the same character. Sorry about that. And there we go, 2.5 million. And now we sh should... yes. And this is the problem. It was supposed to be much cheaper, but for some reason it came with Dulzy and turrets, so it made it actually a lot, a lot more expensive than it should have been. Although maybe I should keep some of these. Dulzy and turrets are always good. 
Although the ship itself is quite large, so trying to defend it from any sort of pirates or anything is going to be a pain. But that's that. Let's quickly get rid of all the unnecessary cargo we have, buys, and now we quickly need to equip it with the proper turrets. And there it is, the heavy mining array, array or whatever. Okay, so basically it's pretty simple. If you want to mine advanced alloys such as metal ores, for example niobium, gold, etc, etc, you need to have a combination of four things. First of all, you need to have the proper IFF. In this case, it's the Independent Miners Guild. Secondly, you need to have the appropriate ID for it, which is the mining, uh, Independent Miners Guild ID for me. Then, you need to have the proper ship, in our case, that is the Hegemon. And fourth, you need to have at least one mining turret. In this case, we have four. So, needless to say, even if you have one part from this four requirements missing, if you shoot the, uh, shoot the little rocks in these fields, nothing will happen. It's not like with the Junkers, when we saw, we actually did that in a Chimera, we got it filled up pretty quickly, fair enough. But it was still about one-fifth of what a Junker id character could do. And uh, this is not like the uh, Junker ID. Hmm. Something is happening in Freeport. In uh, Magellan, something's happening in Magellan. But that is not ours to check out right now. We are more interested in Tau 23. Alright, so we are in Tau 23 now. All we need to do is bring up our map, select the Mineable Zones map, and nothing happens because we haven't explored the mining places yet. But no fear, we actually know where it is. And there's one of them. You can see it's a nice little spherical thingy -ma -dingy. Um Now obviously the problem with Tau 23 is the fact that there's actually quite a lot of people here. Needless to say, it's very populated by pirates, and uh, when I'm going to make that pirate video, we are going to obviously visit Tau 23 and pester the miners just a little bit. So that is one of the things about mining. You are standing still, you are a viable target for any sort of attack, be it NPC or player. So keep that in mind. Also, trying to get away if you see a pirate is almost impossible because of these rocks. As you can see, the, the ship is actually quite large, and it's not easy to maneuver. Okay, so we are here, and we have the mining array. We are going to just start mining now. Okay, we have shot a few rocks. Let's quickly check the hold. And we already have 62 Niobe more. If we check the trade, we need to go to New Berlin with this, so that is where we are going to go. But first, it's time to actually fill up the cargo space with our precious ore, and this might actually take time. So I've been mining for about 5 minutes now, and needless to say, this is not really my choice of money making, just because it's just shooting rocks. I really don't like that. At least NPCs shoot you back. But obviously, this isn't the only way you can make uh, money on Discovery. You can hunt for codename weaponry and sell them to players on the forum. You can make ships and sell them to people who would rather not trouble themselves. You can hunt bounties, for example. And actually, there's quite a lot of ways you can make money, and mining is just one of them. If you will ever make an Outcast or a Corsair character, you'll quickly find that some of the missions that are on Malta and Creed, they actually pay for up to 7 million credits, and that's only the mission itself. The mission cargo you get, you can actually sell off for 12 or 15 million. So that's ma that makes about 20, sorry, 20 million in total. Now obviously Tau 23 is quite populated, as I already said, as you can see on my radar, we already have a IMG coming over, so I'm not going to be the only one who is currently mining. 
look at him bumping around the rocks just like I was. But okay, at least I'm almost full. So in a moment we are actually going to get going towards our place of destination, New Berlin. Alright then, our cargo hold is full, it's time for us to get the hell out of this place. And the easiest way, in theory, to do that is through Kasari, sort of. Kasari tends to be a very, very empty system, uh, cluster of system, it's a house. And Kasari by itself is quite empty, unless you are a miner and you haul your ore yourself, so that is where the problems start. So what we need to do is first we need to go to Kyushu, because that is the jump hole if we don't want to take the gates. Oh, quite frankly, fuck this field, I hate it. Seriously, if you ever get jumped by a pirate here, you won't be able to escape. Physically, won't be able to escape. But okay, we can sort of endure it. We're miners, we shoot rocks for a living. How metal is that? You're a fucking large mining ship in space, blasting apart rocks with high power laser beams. Ah! Now that is something I would like to do in real life. No, not really. Ow. Alright then, I suppose this is a very good time to actually start talking about piracy. So, piracy is pretty much done by players who are using a ID, which allows them to demand cargo, money, or any sort of roleplay action, and destroy the player if they refuse. So what this means is that they can actually ask me for the full price of my cargo easily. There's no rule stating that you can't ask for 100% of the profit. They can ask me to dump all my cargo, and if the pirate is actually a dick, he might actually order me to shoot it myself. So, considering this Niobium ore here is almost sold for 10,000 per unit, I would be efficiently u losing 27 million credits. That's actually quite a lot. What we're carrying in our hold right now is a whole very heavy fighter with the top weapons, top armor upgrade, top shields, thrusters, and everything else. Needless to say, mining is very... Sorry about that. Sorry, beer. Uh, as I said, mining currently is the best source of income. The only thing that is very bad about it is that it's quite risky. First of all, you have to spend all that time in the field, then you have to fly it all the way. Anyway, pirates can currently use any sort of ship. They can attack you in a light fighter, they can attack you in a battleship. Now, obviously, the only thing is that if they're attacking you in a battleship, they're morons, because battleships lack a cruise disruptor, so if you're fast enough, you can actually get away. Obviously, that's not exactly the case in this thing, because it's very wide, very large, and... Quite frankly, it's very hard to dodge in, so escaping in this thing is not going to be easy. But there are ways to survive pirate, ash, uh, pirate encounters, and the, biggest, the best way to survive a pirate is to never encounter it in the first place. And this is where the chat comes in. As you probably already see, the chat allows you to see the location of players. If you, and if you know the road you're taking, and you already know some players who are uh, known pirates, for example, uh, the ones belonging to pirate factions, you can easily see if they are there or not. For example, if we are going to go through New Tokyo, there's only two guys there. One's a rank 42, the other is a 38. So obviously there are of no threat to us but it never is a bad idea to double check. In our case, we don't actually have too much protection, we actually will need to dock and resupply on nanobots because I forgot to do that, but hopefully we can get this cargo to New Berlin intact, because that is a completely new fighter there. 
Alright then, we made a very quick pit stop on this little planet here and we are ready to go again. So in order to get to New Berlin we actually have to go quite a long way. And I sort of fucked up my weapons groups. I'm going to probably make a video about these later as well. But anyway, hopefully we won't need to use our weapons anyway. Alright then, our destination is New Berlin. So that will make us fly through quite a few systems. Let's actually check how. Let's click on the trade routes, click on Planet New Berlin, there it is, and show fastest path. If we go back to our universe map, you can see that's one, two, three, four, five systems. That's a lot. That's five systems where you could encounter any number of pirates. And this is actually the moment when you start. Ne you need to start thinking about escorts. Escorts are actually a viable option only if you're transporting ore in a large enough ship. For example, a five k. A, fi a five k is a transport with five thousand cargo. So the idea is uh, that you pay the person, for example, ten million credits, so he will scout for you and it warns you of any pirate activity along the way, and. At the same time, you still keep 40 million credits, which you might otherwise lose. So that is something you want to keep in mind. It doesn't really work with regular trading that much, because you make about, tw about 12 million per trip. And needless to say, if the person you are hiring is going to waste his time flying from point A to point B, he will probably want to get uh, paid just a little bit more than that. The transport ship we're currently using is not really survival. Not only it's very slow and really very large, it doesn't really have that many hit points. As you can see, its base armor is 145,000. Which means that uh, a bomber could easily kill this with one torpedo. So, obviously, the best way you can extend your survivability is to buy armor. But many many traders don't usually do that because it actually takes up cargo space, and you know, taking up cargo space is not not the thing you would like to do. But again, if you are hauling ore, and you are going to make a very very good profit anyway, you should probably invest in some sort of armor upgrade. Maybe perhaps this ship is just a little bit too large, but again. So you might think, oh look, this guy went out so we don't collide. No, he's probably just giving me a chance to fly towards the pirate first, so if the pirate catches me, he can flee. Or he's actually going for the for a completely different trade lane. You need to be very paranoid when you're hauling ore, because that guy might as well just dock on that station and switch to a Spired character, that is completely within the rules. And there are some people who do that quite often. They keep their pirates in every single system that you have on an ore run, because you could actually ask quite a bit from a pirate, uh, from a tr uh, from miner hauling this sort of cargo. For example, if a regular trader can be asked about 2 to 3 to 5 million credits, 5 million is already a bit too much actually then you could actually ask about 20 million to 25 million credits from an ore transport just because of how much they actually make. Well, we are currently in Honshu. We have one, two, three, four systems left. Hopefully we won't find anything, but Sigma 13 is actually where I usually start to get nervous. Let's quickly see what currently we have. Minecraft Raider. Oh, this is a bit um, obvious. That's a bit too obvious of a name there. It means that it is a pirate and we probably don't want to encounter it. 
Actually, how much money do we have? We have 3 million credits. Let's quickly dock on, sta on the next station and see if we, if we can actually buy some sort of armor upgrade. Even the smallest one can multiply your base armor for quite a bit and it will make these sort of encounters just a little bit more survivable. Welcome to the Osaka storage facility. We are going to land here for a moment and see what kind of armor upgrades we can get. So there's two types of armor upgrades. One is the universal armor upgrade and one is the capital one. The universal armor upgrade is pretty much what it sounds like. It is an armor upgrade for universal usage. Let's see if we can find one. So this is a universal armor upgrade. As you can see, the cheapest one is for only 255,000 credits. And it already multiplies your base armor for 1.4 and it occupies two space. What we can get right now is this one for 2 million, 2.6 million, and it almost doubles my cargo, uh, my armor, and it only occupies four cargo space. So you can see how easy it is to actually make your ship just a little bit more survivable-ish. All I need now is four cargo space. Sorry there, or I'll need to get one of you off my ship. But okay, that's going to be well worth it if we're not going to be instantly killed by a lone bomber. When you're playing a pirate, it's actually pretty easy to guess which players are miners and which players are ore haulers. For example, if we open the map again and if we check the... Ah, uh, there we go. Tau 23. John Miner. Well, apart from the obvious name, something I already told you in the first episode that you should never make your name so easily, you know, distinguishable, you can see which players sit there for quite a while time and then they start moving through Kusari over to Rainland. So, obviously, this is just one of the ways. So, this player there which uh, the one that is in Sigma 13 right now, the next the next system I actually have to go to. His name is Minecraft Raider, so it's probably safe to assume that it's a pirate. At the same time, we have two other guys there, a Kruger and a DHC. Both are probably um, traitors, so let's see if they are already being pirated by this guy and if we can slip past. Let's hope for our sake. We're actually not really losing any money because we didn't buy the ore, we mined it up, but at the same time we actually wasted quite a bit of time from not only mining it up, but actually getting here, so let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best. So there's the DHC. He just took the lane. Needless to say, the pirate right now, if there's a pirate on the lane, he is probably going to go for that guy first. Let's just hope that we can actually exit the lane fast enough if we see something. Always keep your um, finger on the escape key and watch the... Um, there we go, the first lane is completely clear. Let's hope there's nothing on the second one. You can actually feel your heart pounding, because this is a big profit you're currently carrying. You don't want to lose it. And you know that one pirate is all it takes to ruin your day. And it's clear, oddly enough. It means that we are currently have one more system get to get through, and that is Frankfurt. And as far as I can see, there is no one in Frankfurt. So, so far so good. And here we are, New Berlin, one lane away from our salvation. So, this is pretty much how mining works, at least solo mining. It is probably not as profitable because you are actually mining, spending time, then you have to call it. And uh, it's probably easy to actually sell it off to other players, the cargo I mean, and let them haul it and deal with the pirates. 
that is called mining. You can obviously make a trader and actually just go around and uh, ask miners if they would be willing to sell their ore for you for half price. So you you would usually see people selling their raw ore in the same system as they mine for about 5,000 or 4,000 credits per unit. And here we go. We got 25 million out of this. In total, we have 26. And you know what that means. And there we go. A few mining trips worth... Actually, only one mining trip worth. And now we have a new transport to actually hunt... Um, hunt NPCs in, I give to you the destructive pistachio. Pistachio. Alright then, so now that we actually have means to make money, two whole ways by the way, in the next episode I'm going to show you how to spend that money. I'm going to show you a few ships, actually explain about the ship types in Discovery, and give a few hints as to what to do and what not to do as a new player when you encounter these things. This was Spazzy Dragon, aka Syndromes. If you found this video interesting or helpful in any way, please leave a comment, bump it up just a little bit if you want to, and just, you know, fly safe.